And then there is the Mueller hearings, still in progress. There's been some fireworks. How about this from Representative Jim Jordan, Republican from Texas? Oh, roll that tape. Maybe a better course of action, maybe a better course of action is to figure out how the false accusation started. Maybe it's to go back and actually figure out why Joseph Nipson was lying to the FBI. And here's the good news. Here's the good news. That's exactly what Bill Barr is doing. And thank goodness for that. That's exactly what the Attorney General and John Durham are doing. They're going to find out why we went through this three-year th three the saga and get to the bottom of it. Okay, that was one of the highlights of the morning. With us now, Alan Dershowitz, Harvard Law Professor Emeritus. He also wrote the introduction to the published Mueller report. Professor, before we get into the discussion here, I want to show you a tweet from President Trump this morning quoting Fox News' Chris Wallace. Here's the tweet. This has been a disaster for the Democrats and a disaster for the reputation of Robert Mueller. Chris Wallace, Fox News, he said that. Professor Dershowitz, your thoughts, please. Well, I think it's a sad day for Robert Mueller, who's had a very distinguished career, and I knew him when he was in the height of his career. This showed him as somebody who was really not in charge. It showed him as somebody who was not particularly familiar with the contents of the report. He used every possible excuse, either not to answer or to just refer to the report. And he didn't do it because he was instructed by the Justice Department. He did it because he seemed confused by the questions, that he seemed incapable of giving uh, coherent answers to complex questions. Uh, for me, the bottom line is we should no longer call this the Mueller report. This now deserves to have the title the staff report. It's very clear that Mueller didn't write this report. It's very clear that this is a product of staff members uh, and that the usual role of a special counsel, as, for example, in the Star Council, is really to go over every word and to make sure everything is his product. There's every reason to doubt that that happened in the instance of the Mueller report. And so I'm, I'm very concerned about who really was in charge of the Mueller investigation and the Mueller report. It does not seem like Robert Mueller played that crucial and important yeah. role. And if you look further into this, we are told that many people on the Mueller team, the staff who wrote the report, were vigorous anti-Trumpers. Some of them were never Trumpers. I don't know whether that's accurate or not, but if you're suggesting that Mueller didn't actually write much of the report, it was the staff that did it, you have to look at the staff's motivation, right? Absolutely. It becomes more and more essential, and I hope some of the questioning later on will deal with that, about how the staff was selected. Uh, I know several members of the staff. I've dealt with them when they were in lawyers in, in government practice. And the question is, why did he select so many people who seem to have an animus against the president? And his answer is going to be, we don't have a political test. It's just a coincidence that so many of them turned out to be uh, very, very active in efforts to prevent Trump from being elected president. But when you have a weak uh, head of the commission, like Robert Mueller apparently was, it's so much more important to have a fair, balanced, equal staff, and I, I just don't think we had that. I think the other headline is that Mueller, despite his statement that he would not go beyond the report, did go beyond the report. The report itself doesn't say categorically that were it not for the Office of Legal Counsel rule saying you can't indict a president, um, were it not for that, we would have charged the president. It, it, the report just doesn't say that. Uh, and yet he seemed to be implying that today in answers to both uh, Congressman Liu and Congressman Nadler. And, and, and so there's a very strict uh, and very strong contradiction between what Mueller said today and what Attorney General Barr said some months ago, where he said, our determination was made without regard to nor based on the constitutional considerations that surround the indictment and criminal prosecution of a sitting president. So we have a stark conflict between the Attorney General's interpretation of the report and, the, and Robert Mueller's interpretation mm -hmm. of the report. And that became exacerbated by today's testimony. The testimony has gone on now for three hours. I'm sure you've seen it. After these three hours yes. and what you've seen, do you think that President Trump thus far in the hearings walks away unscathed? 
No, I think it's a it's a tie, basically, because mostly what we've heard is views of the Congress people and the Democrats obviously make the argument against the president. The Republicans make the argument for it. So I would call it a tie. I think that just repeating some of the negative conclusions and evidence in the Mueller report, which is unfair because it was never cross examined. It was never subject to an adversarial process um, does uh, uh, suggest uh, some negatives about the president. And then the Republicans come back and suggest negatives about the Democrats. So in the end, I think it's a tie. In the end, I don't think the American public has learned very much right. in the first investigation. Mm. There'll be another one this afternoon, and we'll have to wait and see whether anything relevant comes out. But right now, nothing new has emerged. Professor, we need your help on what I think of as a legalism. I want to play you a soundbite from Representative Steve Chabot asking Robert Mueller about the word collusion and perhaps the definition of collusion. Right. Roll tape, please. This hearing today is their last best hope to build up some sort of groundswell across America to impeach President Trump. That's what this is really all about uh, today. Now, a few questions. On page uh, 103 of volume two of your report, when discussing the June 2016 Trump Tower meeting, uh, you referenced, quote, the firm that produced the steel reporting, unquote. The name of that firm was Fusion GPS. Uh, this is outside my purview. The owner of Fusion GPS, uh, that did the Steele dossier, that started all this, uh, he, he's not mentioned in there. I'm sorry, Professor, it wasn't about collusion. It was about Fusion GPS and how this whole investigation got started. Right. That's what the Republicans wanted to get at, but Robert Mueller was having none of it. He didn't want to go there, didn't want to touch it at all. No, but let's, yeah, but let's talk to collusion for one second, because <clears throat> he did ask Mueller, was collusion the same as conspiracy? And uh, Mueller really didn't want to get into that. But it's interesting, <clears throat> because for the first month of the investigation, everybody, all President Trump's enemies were talking about collusion, collusion, collusion. I know I was on CNN a lot those days, and all they were talking about is collusion. And I would say over and over again, collusion's not a crime, collusion's not a crime, collusion's not a crime. And all the CNN commentators would say, collusion is a crime, collusion is a crime. And of course, the Mueller report comes out and it says, collusion is not a crime. And Mueller today says, Collusion is not a crime. Hmm. And so we've moved from collusion to conspiracy, and the Mueller report concluded not only was there no collusion, but there was no conspiracy. And I think the hardest question that Mueller was asked, and he didn't answer it because he didn't seem to understand it, was why did you reach a conclusion about collusion, that there was simply no basis for charging the president with collusion, and then refused to come to a conclusion about obstruction of justice? And Mueller's report was incompetent. Mueller said, well, the reason we didn't come to a conclusion is because you couldn't indict the president. But then the follow-up question was, but you couldn't indict him on conspiracy either, but you came to a conclusion there. Why did you come to a conclusion on conspiracy, but not come to a conclusion on obstruction of justice? And Mueller was dumbfounded. He simply could not answer that question. He didn't seem to understand it, but if he understood it, he simply couldn't answer. And that's a key, key question, and I hope there will be some follow-up on that from some of the people in the next session. Professor Dershowitz, thank you very much for being with us this morning on a very important session in Congress. And we do appreciate it, Professor. Thank you, sir.